Yeah, and then we have another um, variant uh, for data streams, classification of data streams, which uses naive base. Uh, and we'll see uh, this um, adoption actually uh, in a very specific um, application, text classification or text document classification. Um, but um, it is um, very generic, so um, the, the generalization to other applications um, is very straightforward. So anyway, a short recap on uh, naive base. Um, so yeah, we've typically given an instance with attributes. We want to predict the class label again. And in that case, that maxim that class label that maximizes that posterior, uh, posterior uh, probability, the probability to pick C given the observation X, yeah, which can be computed according to base rule um, from the uh, class prior and um, the a priori likelihoods, um, uh, th these guys here. Yeah? So the decision rule is uh, this one here, as you may recall from KDD1, we take uh, the class prior times the a priori likelihoods of an observation X given class C. The class prior can be estimated from the training set by uh, just get taking the relative frequencies C's of each class. Uh, the instance likelihoods, um, they are much harder since the observations are typically uh, multidimensional. So uh, in that case, so d-dimensional. So in that case, one way to do that very efficiently is um, to apply uh, the, locality, uh, the uh, attribute independence assumption, which uh, is the... Um, uh, method uh, used uh, in naive base so uh, we assume that uh, each um, observation each, each attribute is independent to each other so no correlations among the attributes and in that case we can simply um, multiply the individual um, um, yeah, uh, instance likelihoods um, from uh, in order to get the, the, the accumulated instance likelihood yeah. And those uh, individual ones, um, feature-wise um, likelihoods, can be estimated easily from the training set. So now the qu uh, uh, question is, in order to get from batches, uh, batch scenario to stream scenario, how can we maintain the model estimates over time, especially uh, those um, uh, probability estimates? Uh, how can we include new instances in the model? How can we forget obsolete instances? Yeah. And uh, once again, uh, we see how to answer those questions, um, assuming a stream of documents, um, but the solution presented here is not limited uh, to text, it can be uh, generalized very easily. So here is the application given a training set of documents with vocabulary, uh, with some vocabulary. So the words are actually the features and the um, class label is either positive or negative. For example, um, sentiment, uh, positive sentiment, negative sentiment. Yeah? So NC is the number of documents, the number of objects. NYC is the number of how often a given word, a given feature occurs in all documents of a class C. And for a new document, we would like to predict its class, of course, given the words, the features in this document. Yeah? So the words, once again, of each document are the features of the documents. And using naive base, this can be done very easily. Uh, we need the, the class prior, which is uh, the number of documents uh, by uh, times, uh, um, the, uh, b sorry, divided by uh, or normalized by the number of documents the number of documents for one class divided by the so, uh, entire number of uh, en of the entire documents and uh, the word class conditional estimations uh, is the number of um, words uh, the number of how many how often a word i um, uh, appears in documents of class c yeah? so that is uh, quite easily and uh, we weight that with a, rel a relative frequency of a, of a word in uh, in a document yeah so that is that is quite easy to do um, with naive base in a batch scenario so the question is how can we maintain those um, probabilities over time so f before we do that this is just a uh, visual um, explanation for what we've done so far so uh, we have the training data here uh, two are negatively labeled have a negative sentiment three are positive have a positive label so the class di distribution is three um, by f three or five for positive two or five for negative so that would be this factor here um, for each class 
and uh, yeah, here you have the word class distributions. Yeah, so perfect. The word perfect appears two times in class uh, uh, green positive, uh, zero times in um, in the class in in the documents uh, of of class uh, negative and so on and so on. Yeah, and you can just um, put those values in here in order to uh, make a decision for a given um, uh, um, document you want to classify. So now, how can we um, yeah, uh, adopt the model to stream? So the prediction is now based on model that counts up to time slot t. Yeah? So we just incorporate uh, the time slot t into the whole thing, which is, well, uh, we just accumulate all the counts uh, um, from the beginning of the stream until time slot t. So there's basically nothing uh, done uh, so far. And the model update is well. If we add info, uh, well, if we have a new uh, document, we add the information of the new document in the model, which affects um, basically those accumulated counts. Yeah. So for all words occurring in D, we um, in, in occurring in the new arriving uh, document, we update the corresponding counts here. Yeah. The only problem is here is with this accumulated uh, thing is that everything is accumulated, nothing is forgotten. Yeah, so new instances are always accumulated, um, nothing is forgotten. So it is difficult to adopt to changes in time. Um, so here is the visualization of this approach. That now we assume that um, one document per time slot is appearing through um, the stream and we just accumulate all the counts we had so far. Now we just accumulate it over the stream. So if something new is arriving, we just accumulate again uh, the whole uh, thing. So now how can we uh, uh, yeah, uh, incorporate also something, something which is uh, accounting for the aging of the text stream, of the, of the text documents. So a temporal model that keeps track of the last time that an observation has been made in the stream, that should be um, adorable, yeah? So um, yeah, for the class record, the time of the last class observation in the stream is um, yeah, uh, tracked in addition to uh, the accumulative counts. And for the word class pairs, we do the same actually. Yeah. So um, and we propagate those timestamps from documents to classes and to word class pairs. Yeah. So um, uh, and this propagation is actually a decoupling, a temporal decoupling of words from documents. So observation updates might now come from different documents, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, and this now allows then to differentiate observations based on the recencies, and we'll see. Uh, that it's very easy to incorporate this 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 temporal decoupling. Um, so we just incorporate some aging model for words. Yeah, for example, an exponential aging for words at the current time t relative to the last occurrence of the particular word uh, word which has been at t i. Yeah, and uh, uh, for an exponential aging, we also uh, need a decay rate. So we can use, for example, this here to do that. So this is this t here is the actual the current time slot, and t i is the last um, time slot uh, the, is the ta time slot of the last occurrence of this word here. We we which we uh, for which we compute the uh, the 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 weight. Yeah, the aging. Okay, and then we can just update the accumulated um, um, yeah, counts or better, even better, the temporal probability estimates by just um, weighting all the counts uh, with these uh, uh, aging weights. Yeah? So this is the same as before, but we just weight each count um, with the corresponding age uh, weight yeah and the same uh, um, uh, are, and we do the same for 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 the um, uh, observation probabilities yeah and that's it uh, basically so it's a very easy uh, model maintenance um, uh, when we add new documents th through the stream yeah we just update the model counts uh, based on the document that comes in and the set of affected entries um, um, related to T, yeah, and we can easily um, integrate here um, an aging model, whatever we want, yeah. So knife-based classifiers are really good choices for streams. It's also very popular, simple, powerful. Uh, allow the easy adoption 
of the model based on new instances and can also deal with dynamic feature spaces. We didn't talk about that feature, but um, just that you know. Yeah? And we have seen two different types of uh, naive base um, variants here. The accumulative uh, naive base just counts or um, increases the count values for each, for each new instance, does not forget. Yeah, so it's difficult to adapt to changes. If you don't want to adapt to changes, a cumulative, a cumulative naive base uh, stream classification does the job. If you want to account um, to changes, then um, an aging based and um, naive base, which we have seen before, provide a temporal decoupling um, so that uh, the model can follow or can allow for aging um, so that uh, yeah, um, more recent observations are more important than uh, than uh, uh, older one and prob possibly obsolete ones. Yeah? So um, yeah, that's that's it. Naive base uh, is is a good choice for for streams because it's it's really easy to apply, basically.